in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A very warm welcome to our worship at Exeter Cathedral here this morning, whether you are with us online or with us in person. An especially warm welcome if you're with us for the first time. Uh, there are children's colouring sheets um, at the back of the cathedral, if any of you would like to colour them in. No age limits apply. Um, and it's a great pleasure to have uh, with us again today the choirs from the Episcopal Church of the Holy Spirit, Harleysville, Pennsylvania, and from All Saints Episcopal Church, Princeton in New Jersey. Uh, thank you very much for your beautiful music making throughout the week and we look forward to more this morning. Thank you. We continue to ask God's blessing on the children of our community during their summer holidays. Praying together. God, God of, of love, love passionate, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Give us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray. Let your merciful ears, O Lord, be open to the prayers of your humble servants, and that they may obtain their petitions, make them to ask such things as shall please you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen.
other side while he dismissed the crowd. And after he had dismissed the crowd, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against it. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them on the lake. But when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, it is you. You command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You are of little faith. Why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We seem to have had a lot of St Peter in recent weeks, as is only fitting in a building dedicated to him. Just last week, we had Peter and James and John up the mountain with Jesus for the Transfiguration. Two weeks ago at Evensong, our visiting preacher preached about Peter being miraculously freed from prison by the angel. And today we have another classic Peter story. Peter wants to walk on the water and has a go, but in the end, it all goes wrong, and he needs Jesus to reach out and catch him. It all goes wrong. Could be a description of Peter. He is the accident-prone buffoon of the Gospels, trying to defend Jesus when Jesus says he's going to be arrested and executed. No, that must never happen. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan, or saying stupid things on the Mount of Transfiguration, or jumping in to cut off the servant's ear when they arrest Jesus. And of course, above all, Peter, who three times says he does not know Jesus. You also were with him, says the servant girl. Me? No, I've never seen him. And then the cock crows, and Peter breaks down and weeps. Jesus, of course, restores Peter, famously asking him three times, do you love me? And then commissioning him three times, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. The pattern of Peter gets it wrong, 
And Jesus restores him, forgives him, and uses him despite his failure. It is the pattern of Christian living and discipleship. It is the heart of the gospel. And there is this lovely allegory of it in today's gospel reading. Peter walks on the water, but his faith fails him, and he sinks. And Jesus reaches out his hand and catches him and brings him to safety. It is the story of salvation. The evil of the world threatens to overwhelm us. We lose faith. We take our eyes off Jesus, and we allow the storm of life to control our responses. We are sinking in the abyss of greed and destructiveness, of self-pity and of laziness. But God in Christ reaches from heaven and lifts us from the jaws of hell and brings us to safety. But as good as that account is, I think it misses a step. It is not just Peter gets it wrong and Jesus restores him. I think the first part of the story is really important. The reason Peter fails so spectacularly is that he is confident and bold to have a go in the first place. He is the passionate, committed disciple. He's the one who deeply wants to love Jesus and follow him to the ends of the earth. And he's the one who has the deepest insight into the mysteries of God. It was Peter who recognised Jesus as the Messiah. Who do people say that I am? asked Jesus. And the rest of the disciples gave the expected exam answer. Elijah, a prophet, John the Baptist come back from the dead. But who do you say that I am? And Peter gave the answer of the heart. You are the Messiah. Which elicits from Jesus, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. This is the context of Peter saying, of course you can't be executed, you've got a job to do. That is the shadow side of his devotion, of his allegiance. It's not an act of unfaithfulness, but simply of misplaced faithfulness. And I think that's true of Peter's denial also. The back story is that Peter has boldly declared his allegiance. Lord, I am ready to go with you, even to prison and to death. And when Jesus is arrested, the other disciples all run away and are nowhere to be seen. But Peter stays close. He creeps into the courtyard of the high priest's house, the closest he could get to get a sense of what's going on. He only denies Jesus because he wants to be with him, but he can't quite cope with the pressure. And the same is true in today's story. The real story for Peter isn't that his faith failed him, is that he had a go in the first place. The other disciples are safely in the boat, but Peter, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Peter got out of the boat, crazy, impetuous, filled with faith, bold, adventurous, passionate for Jesus, wanting it all. Isn't this the kind of faith we want? Isn't this the kind of faith we aspire to? And this is the context of Peter's failure. And it makes me wonder whether really this is the context of all our sins and failures. I think I think of my mistakes and sins as fundamentally acts of sordid cowardice, grubby, self-seeking, gutless failures, revealing my pathetic littleness. But what if that's not true? What if it's 
our ham-fisted attempts to stretch ourselves, to discover passion, to do great things that leads us to fall on our faces. Those who conquered kingdoms and built empires were seeking to do great things, though they were also subjugating whole populations. Those who built power stations and harnessed oil were seeking to lift people out of poverty, even though they were ransacking the Earth's resources and polluting the planet. Every technological advance both stretches the limits of human capability and opens the possibility of abuse and harm. Even in the church, those who wreak havoc and division passionately believe they are defending the truth and saving the church from error. And what is the alternative? The alternative is a cautious restraint in which we never get it wrong because we never try to do anything right. But Jesus is calling us to bold discipleship. What that means will be different for every person. For one person, it will be to immerse themselves in the life of a local community, in its politics or its social action. For another person, it will be to immerse themselves in the life of family. For another, in campaigning for justice. For another, in volunteering. For another, in, in industry or education or law or sport. For another, in a life of prayer. For another, in friendships for another in the life of the church. The opportunities for passionate engagement, for responding to Christ's voice are multiple and varied. And with every one of them, there is the danger of getting it spectacularly wrong. That is, that our passion comes out as excess of anger or divisiveness or arrogance or greed or neediness or whatever it is. And that's the reason why in every area we need schemes of ethics and standards, medical ethics, standards in public life, financial accountability. Not primarily because we're great at being awful, but because we're awful at being great. And unlike the judgment of the world, God's grace is able to see that greatness, that passion, the germ of faithful commitment at the heart of the chaos we create. Jesus saw the potential of Peter to be the rock. Jesus continued to see Peter's potential even after he denied him. And Jesus invites him to receive forgiveness and to hear again his commission. Are we able to see people with the eyes of God? Can we see the possibilities, the ways in which their vocation is somewhat, somehow masked? Sorry, in, in, sorry, the ways in which their vocation is somewhere masked, but also revealed by their failures. It's more adventurous and more Christ-like than simply writing people off. And perhaps, hardest of all, can we recognise the loyalty and the faithfulness that is buried deep in our own terrible mistakes? I don't mean the self-justifying reason we grasp for defensively when people point out our mistakes. That's simply an attempt to avoid judgement and keeps us in our self-deceit. I mean having looked into the eyes of Christ and having owned the wrong we do, can we then see ourselves with the eyes of Christ, recognised, loved, restored and commissioned? Amen.
Archdiocese, Bishop Robert, as he continues his journey towards retirement, his suffragans, Bishop James and Bishop Jackie, as she prepares to undertake the role during the vacancy. We offer prayers for the vacancy and see committee. We pray for their discernment and that they may be guided by your Holy Spirit. Bless and guide all involved in the life and worship of this our cathedral church. For the visiting choirs who help lead our worship whilst ours are on summer break. And all who seek to serve you in the name of Christ our servant. Lord, in your mercy. We continue to remember in our prayers people living in areas of conflict. All people living in the shadow of repression and those whose lives are impacted by poverty. Remembering especially today all those whose lives are affected by natural disasters, wildfires, and have the need to flee their homelands. We pray for our King and Queen and the whole royal family as they approach the anniversary of the late Queen's death. Bestow grace and humility on those who are called on to lead and steward your people. May they use their influence for the good of your created world. May they seek to address those issues which continue to endanger the world in which we live. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We pray for those less fortunate, those we regularly see living on our streets. We give thanks for those in our community who provide help and support. The Cathedral Wednesday Night Kitchen, the St. Petrox Centre, and all who tend to the needs of others. We pray for those who, due to the cost of living crisis, may be struggling to provide for their children during the summer school holidays, a period when that safety net of the school is not available. Loving God, give us good grace to be the messengers your Son Jesus Christ called us to be. Help us each day to carry the message of your loving grace and kindness into our community. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We take a moment to remember all who are in need of your healing power. Watch over those sick in body, mind and spirit. Especially for those named in our service sheet. But also for those that we do not know. Lord, in your mercy. pray for all those who have recently died. Those who recently lost their lives fleeing from their adversity, and those in the recent Hawaii fires. We remember especially those named in our service sheet, and those whose names we hold dear in our own hearts. May you safely shepherd their souls to the kingdom of heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Peter and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing grace. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. We belong to him through faith, heirs of the promise of the spirit of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We exchange with one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace, peace be, be with, with you. you. Oh,
earth is yours. All, All things, things come, come from, from you, and, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and singing.
praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Peter, Saint Edward the Confessor, and all the saints, to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our Saviour Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. God of our pilgrimage, you have willed that the gate of mercy should stand open for those who trust in you. Look upon us with your favour, that we who follow the path of your will may never wander from the way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Would you please be seated? First of all, our sincere thanks to our choir who have been singing this past week. So they are a choir from two churches. First of all, from the Episcopal Church of the Holy Spirit in Harleyville, Pennsylvania, and All Saints Episcopal Church in Princeton, New Jersey. So thank you very much. After our service this morning, we have coffee and other refreshments being served from the South Transept. Do hope that you'll be able to stay and you'll be able to speak with our visiting choir. And also, there are many friends and relatives that have joined us in the congregation. I had a chance to speak to some of them this morning, and so we do hope that all of you will stay for coffee this morning. This coming Tuesday, the 15th, is a principal uh, commemoration and festival of the Blessed Virgin Mary, not only in the church throughout the world, but especially within the Church of England. And we do hope that you will come to the Sung Eucharist at 17.30 that evening. There are a number of notices within the uh, orders of service, so do hope that you will take them home with you after the service and read through them. But a couple of pointers, you'll see one on page 24 about ride and stride, and we have got a number of people that are taking part, and we do hope that you'll be able to sponsor them. So there is a table set to one side by a coffee where um, there will be a person from our cathedral community who is able to help you with your donation or your sponsorship. Also, we are trying to encourage you to come along to our Bishop of Exeter's farewell next month. We will be saying goodbye to him at 10 o'clock from the cathedral community, but there are, it's also a very big service for the actual whole of the diocese at 3 p.m. If you'd like to come to the one in the afternoon, you do need to get a ticket. There are still quite a few tickets available, but don't miss your opportunity. People will wake up in the diocese nearer the time, and those tickets will go very, very quickly. So please do get your ticket for the afternoon, but we will also look forward to seeing you in the morning when we say our farewells to him from the cathedral community. And there are lots more things in the orders of service. Do please read the notices and take them home with you.
I omitted a very important notice, but thank goodness the Dean is at the back keeping tabs on me. Um, there, we are, as you know, having elections to the Deanery Synod. You haven't got long to return your vote, so either online or you can do it by the paper that has been sent to you. So a matter of days, I believe. So please return your vote for those who are standing from the cathedral for the Deanery Synod. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thank you.